I'm Justin Pritchard, and this video is about the new Kia K5, which replaces the Optima in Kia's product lineup and gives shoppers a modern and compelling choice on a new sedan with many strengths and few weaknesses. So let's take it for a spin. I'd say the real secret sauce with this car comes down to three key things, and in this video I'm going to focus mainly on explaining what those are and what they mean to the driver as experienced from right here behind the wheel in real life. In a moment, I'll be taking you on a road test to get you up to speed on the K5 GT line, but remember to check the links in the description below for more useful videos on the K5, including my video highlight on its fantastic headlights, and a video highlight where I rank the K5 against what I figure are some of its best competitors from Hyundai, Subaru, and Nissan. You can like and subscribe while you're down there so you never miss anything new, and if you're new here, welcome to the Driving.ca YouTube channel. On your screen is the 2021 Kia K5 GT line with a 180 horsepower turbo 4, 8 speed automatic, 4 doors, 5 seats, and all wheel drive. The K5 starts around 30,000, with K5 EX coming in just under 33,000, nicely equipped. Then it's the GT line, like the one on your screen, and that starts around 36,000. And above this K5 GT line will be the K5 GT at around 40,000 when it hits the market as K5's range topping, top performing model with an extra 110 horsepower. That's 290 for the K5 GT from a 2.5 turbo and 180 horsepower for the GT line from a 1.6 turbo. The first ingredient in the K5's secret sauce is the interfaces, the tech, and how the driver fits into the equation. There aren't many of the latest connectivity and tech features that you won't find here. It's got the works from a list of must-have advanced safety gear including radar crews, collision mitigation, lane keeping aids, and outward looking hazard detection systems, to connectivity tech like Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which basically brings a straightforward voice commanded take on your smartphone interface right into the main screen. Everything picks up where you left it on your handset and all you've got to do is plug it in. And there are drive modes via this selector and a slick digital screen in the cluster that's customizable, and the list goes on. The presence of these features is important, but I think more importantly, if this will be your first new car in quite some time, is how approachable all of the tech is. The central screen is bright, fast to respond, logical, and easy to navigate. Even non-tech savvy types will have it sorted out quickly. The safety features are easy to toggle and manipulate as you learn them, and easy to switch on and off to taste as you try them out and get used to how they work. There are even handy infographics that help drivers stay up on which safety systems are in use and what they're doing. The point is, the tech in here feels inviting and easy to get comfortable with, not overwhelming and complex. The second ingredient of the secret sauce is what I'd call a nicely balanced overall drive that will cater nicely to the sportier driver who wants something that's also relaxing on longer trips. The steering, handling, and responsiveness make the K5 feel lively and snappy at the tips of your fingers and toes, more so in sportier drive modes. It's a nod to the Kia Stinger, something that's athletic and responsive but also that turns in a nice touring experience too. Worked hard, the 1.6 liter turbo engine is smooth and eager, but against K5's athletic reflexes, some drivers will wish for more all-out firepower. Steering is quick and heavy, giving it a confident athleticism on the highway and your favorite winding back roads. So it's eager if not outright fast, moves and responds like a smaller and sportier car than it looks if you're driving it spiritedly, and my biggest surprise was that despite all of that, it actually stands up fairly nicely to rougher roads where ride quality is concerned. Specifically, drivers can expect a convincingly spirited feel without big sacrifices to ride comfort on most rougher surfaces. And the third ingredient in the K5's secret sauce is its styling. Now you may like how this looks or not, but the important thing here for the shopper cutting the check is that the car needs to stir pride of ownership and needs to be distinctive and bold. The body, and I think especially the lighting signature, pulls this off nicely, with plenty of details to keep the eyes busy if you look closely. And inside, a generous palette of upscale materials and design touches translates into a nice array of rich details and modern finishes, and nearly enough metal trim to do the dash on a Benz or Cadillac. Just like the body, the cabin offers plenty of detail to reward your eyes and fingertips for looking a bit more closely. Touches like these help create an interior that looks and feels modern, fresh, and top of the line. 
Downsides? Well, some drivers will wish for more power and a smoother and more relaxing ride in a few specific rough road situations, and at low revs the engine can be a little gruff, though it does smooth out once you give it some work to do. So if you're after something on the sportier side where driving feel is concerned, this is a good place to look. And if you test drive the GT line with 180 horsepower and enjoy the way that feels, maybe consider a test drive of the GT with the 290 horsepower engine when that becomes available. And remember you do have some other very compelling choices if you're shopping in this universe. Some of my favorites include the Subaru Legacy, Hyundai Sonata, and Nissan Altima. And to see how the K5 GT line stacks up against those models, check the link in the description below. My name is Justin Pritchard. Until next time, take care and stay safe.